this video, we're going to make some vegan Thanksgiving desserts, mostly focusing on this glorious apple pie. It's completely vegan. It's a very old school, old fashioned, homemade apple pie. And we're even going to make the crust from scratch. I love a really flaky, tender, buttery crust. So I'm going to teach you how to make that. And then I'm also going to show you some kind of troubleshooting stuff. Like if you're worried about your pie getting soggy, or if you've had any issues with rolling out pie dough, I'm going to share all my tips and tricks. And even though we're mostly focusing on this apple pie, I also wanted to include a little bonus recipe because around the holidays, there's a lot of sitting around with your friends and family members. And I know that not everyone loves a super sweet dessert. Some people want just a little bite of something sweet after dinner, but not a full on dessert. So that is what this recipe is going to be. I teamed up with Commodore Coffee. They make some of my absolute favorite coffee and it goes so well with both of these desserts. So I can't wait to tell you about that later. But for now, let's get started with the crust. The complete recipe is written out in the description box below with the exact measurements, but I wanted to show you how I measure my flour. I start by fluffing it up with a spoon and this helps to aerate the flour so it's not too compact. Then I'll spoon that into my measuring cup and I take a butter knife and I flip it over. You can see it has a flatter edge on the other side. So I use that to level off the flour and then I transfer it to a bowl. I add some salt and some sugar. This adds great flavor. It helps to kind of counter the sweetness of the pie. It also adds a little bit of color while it's baking. And then I will add my very cold vegan butter. I will cut up the butter into little cubes and then put it in the fridge while I mix the dry ingredients. That way it stays as cold as possible. And then I just use a fork to mash the flour into the butter. I do that about halfway through. And then right at the end, I kind of just use my hands like you see here. I'm kind of pressing the butter into the flour to hydrate that flour, but it's not going to be completely mixed in. Some of it will be, and some of it will still be in these large pieces of butter like you see here. Peanut size or even a few almond sized pieces is okay. You don't want it to be totally mixed in and uniform, otherwise the pie crust won't be very flaky. Then I'm going to add some cold water, just enough to bring the dough together into a ball and gently knead the dough. You don't want to over knead it, otherwise the pie crust will be a bit tough. But once you've got a ball, you're just going to divide that in half, form each half into discs and chill until firm in the fridge. While the pie dough is in the fridge, I like to go ahead and prep the apples. Now, I like to do a mix of apples for apple pie. I like the majority of the apples to be tart, bright green Granny Smith apples. They have the most acidity, and so they really add a really bright, beautiful apple-y flavor. But I do like to incorporate some other firm apples like Honeycrisp or Fuji apples. These hold up really well while baking, and they offer a little bit of sweetness, and I like the mix of apples. It creates a really nice variety. So I'm just going to peel my apples. I <laughs> actually like using a cheese knife. I know that seems weird, but it has a really wide blade. So it kind of makes the job go by very quickly. And then I will chop all of my apples. I usually save the cores to snack on later. It just is easier this way. I kind of cut four pieces off of the apple around the core and then slice into thick slices. I'm going to add lots of flavor with a combo of cane sugar and brown sugar, and then some fresh lemon juice. This is so good in apple pie. It really brings everything to life. And then the best part, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and a little pinch of salt for balance. Mix that all together and then set it aside. The sugar and the lemon juice is gonna help to draw out some of the moisture and also marinate the apples. The apple pie filling is prepped and ready to go. The pie crust is in the fridge and this is a great time to take a little break and enjoy a cup of coffee. I often want a single cup of coffee and this is so perfect for that because the quality and the flavor is so delicious and it's super, super convenient. You take these really cool coffees from Commodore, you melt them with some hot water and I know that seems like it's not gonna taste very good because when something is this convenient, my little radar goes up and I'm like, mm, that's gonna compromise quality or taste. But that's definitely not the case here. They're flash frozen and they come in recyclable capsules. You can use without any equipment. You can even make espresso drinks, iced coffee, hot coffee, which is forever my favorite. This is also great for those of you who like to bake, if, especially if you don't drink coffee and you don't wanna have to make a whole coffee pot just to make your favorite chocolate, you know, cakes or brownies or muffins, but you still wanna add that little bit of coffee to intensify the chocolate flavor. This is perfect because you can keep these in your freezer, use them whenever you want and have hot coffee ready to go for your recipes just like that. Now, one of my favorite recipes to make for people who don't love desserts is an affogato. An affogato is a really classic old school Italian dessert where you basically scoop your favorite vegan ice cream into a bowl. I'm using vanilla, but you could change it up and you could do something kind of seasonal and festive like a snickerdoodle or a cinnamon ice cream, even a pumpkin pie ice cream would be really good. And then you're gonna pour espresso on top. And I personally don't have an espresso machine. I don't wanna have a ton of equipment in my tiny little kitchen. So these are perfect because you just melt one with a little bit less water and that creates 
creates the perfect espresso and then you just pour it right over the ice cream not too sweet it's just a little something something after a big meal like a holiday meal and I love how the ice cream in the middle is still nice and cold but then around the edges where the espresso is it's like melty and it's just a delicious dessert that I think anybody would love dessert lovers not dessert lovers everybody in between so definitely try that out if you want to check out Commodore they're offering my viewers a free sleeve of coffee which is eight free cups of coffee for a limited time if you click the link in the description box below use this code that you see on the screen like I said it is a limited time offer but you can get eight free cups of coffee by clicking that link so definitely take advantage of it I hope you enjoy and let's get back to making this apple pie if you've ever made a pie crust and it cracked on you and it was hard to work with, chances are it was probably too cold. You wanna make sure it comes to room temperature, but you don't want it to get too soft. If it's too soft, it's gonna be floppy and greasy and hard to work with, so room temperature is perfect. I like to roll it out and then fold it on top of each other about four times like this, and as you can see, I'm literally creating layers. If you've made biscuits before, this is a really similar technique, but I kind of fold it on top of each other to create those layers, and then I roll it out again, and this technique helps to create really Really flaky light layers of pie crust which is so good I'm gonna roll that on top of my pie dish and make sure that it's nestled in neatly and then I'll chill until ready to use now if you've ever had a really soggy apple pie or just any kind of fruit pie that's because the sugar and the lemon juice that's usually added to the filling helps to draw out the moisture so as you can see I now have quite a bit of fresh cinnamon infused apple juice at the bottom of this bowl that's why I like to drain it using a colander and then I'll transfer that juice to a saucepan along with some cornstarch and vanilla to thicken it up and add even more flavor and essentially I'm creating like a simple apple caramel here and this is going to be nice and thick much thicker than those runny juices that were at the bottom of the bowl and then I will add that back to the apples and toss this all together. Now this is going to help prevent a soggy pie. The cornstarch will kind of thicken up the juices as the apples cook. And now that my pie crust is nice and firm and the apples are cool, I will transfer them to my pie crust. I like to use a slotted spoon because as you can see, there's still quite a bit of moisture and I like to leave as much of those apple juices in the bowl as possible. This will prevent a soggy pie. Then I roll out the top crust and I shape it on top of my pie. You wanna make sure you have about two inches of overhang and I like to use some clean kitchen scissors to trim that part off then this is my favorite part it's so relaxing and just kind of mesmerizing I totally lose myself you basically just want to fold the crust underneath itself to basically connect the bottom crust and the top crust together then I use my two fingers like this I kind of create a V shape and I'm just going to flute the edge of the pie crust now having a pie crust that already has this shape honestly makes it so much easier but once you've got it to your liking you can go ahead and brush on a little bit of your favorite plant milk or I've even heard you could do aquafaba which is the water from a can of chickpeas but I've never done that before but basically this is going to create a nice golden brown color and also help the sugar stick and I love sprinkling on a little bit of turbinado sugar it adds a beautiful kind of sparkly textural crunchy element on top that just adds not only flavor but also a little bit of visual interest then we'll bake on top of a cookie sheet that's very important I put the cookie sheet in the oven while it's preheating so it's nice and hot and that hot cookie sheet is going to help to cook the bottom of the pie so it gets nice and crispy. Pies are one of those kind of deceptive desserts, almost like a loaf cake, you know, like a banana bread, where they look done before they're actually done. And so if you've ever had a pie crust that, you know, wasn't very flavorful, it wasn't very crispy, it wasn't very flaky, it might have just been that you didn't cook it for long enough. So you really want to make sure that you don't rush this process. Let it cook and get deeply golden brown. It'll create a crispy, buttery crust. The apples will be tender and perfect and cinnamony and so good. If you guys wanna see some more Thanksgiving recipes, I've got some savory veggie sides right here. Some of my favorite for the holidays are in this video, so definitely check that out. Also got this baking playlist if you wanna make some more vegan desserts. I will link all the recipes from this video in the description box below. Also where you'll find the link to try Comet or Coffee, so check out that link in the description box below, and I will see you guys in a video very soon. Bye.